Welcome back to another edition of Slink Paint Gaming. I'm Berto. I'm Jim. What's up, Jim? How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. All right. We got the second ship that's coming out for Wave 13, the TIE Silencer, which is part of the Last Jedi Star Wars Episode 8 movie. Yes. And you see Kylo doing Kylo things, which I'm hoping he doesn't take out his mother. <laughs> but... but it kind that of lose it to it. Take her out. That uh, that would be so sad. I, you know, I mean, but so, okay. Let's just sidetrack for a second. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sidetrack. Spaceships. Space. No, 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 no. I want to sidetrack. I want to sidetrack. Oh, you want to sidetrack? I want to okay. sidetrack. Okay. I'm a little upset about. I mean, you know, you know, you know. I rest in peace. She's Carrie Fisher. She's amazing. I love her. She's a princess. Always will be a princess to me. But. I, you know, that one part when they showed that, like, he's making the decision to take her out in the trailers, like, does she actually, does he actually do it? You know? I can't, I can't imagine, I can't imagine that that's actually what it looks like, because uh, if you remember the first couple of trailers for The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. there were so many misdirections True. in there, like, things True. that they made it look like this was going to happen, and then you watch the movie, and you're like, oh, Except those are actually two completely exactly. separate scenes that they just edited so they looked like it's the same thing within this one where it looks like Kylo Ren's offering his hand right. to Ray. Right. Uh, it just. I think that's two separate scenes. Yeah. 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 But you know, her uh, Carrie Fisher's it was a Carrie Fisher's brother. I forget who it was mentioned that said that she still she makes an appearance in Episode Nine, even though, um, you know she's passed away, so they might have done some recording for her and stuff like that. But then you had the Disney. Um, I forget who it was. Um, somebody high up in the ranks of Disney there saying that no, she's she's you know she's in Episode Eight and that's it. So yeah. you're assuming that she that they <coughs> pass you know that she you know I don't know what happens or if she passed away or she gets killed in the actions. Who knows? But I I don't know if like my son, you know he's only six you know and it's hard you know he loves the Star Wars and when he watched Force Awakens I actually didn't take him to the theater when he watched Force Awakens at home with me. Because I want to make sure I can explain it to him and understand everything. Yeah. Um, he does not want to watch Force Awakens ever again. He he hates that Han Solo, who he watched in all the other episodes, passes away. And um, you know, and I'm we're going to the theater that on the Friday. We bought our tickets first. You know, matinee showing on Friday to yeah. you know go see it. My biggest fear is you know. What happens if Le you know Princess Leia or General Organa or whatever you know, if she gets off or somebody else in the characters get off because I don't think my son can handle it. <laughs> you know, it's hard to say. I don't think I can handle it. I mean, neither. I almost cried when Han Solo died. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna lie. I teared up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it, I was like, yeah. it's a part of your life. Well, it's a part of your life, and when you like when you yeah. when you live and breathe Star Wars and you're so into it, it's just. You know, I've you know. I, anyway, all right, back to the back to the ships, back to the ships. Oh yes, spaceships, right? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're talking about right now is the Tie Silencer. This ship is badass. I'm gonna flip it's my screen impressive. right to it. Take a look at that. Damn, that thing looks good. I'm showing the large box screen right here. Yeah. And one thing, Jim, you noticed this. It's in a big <laughs> box. But it's small a small ship, base, ship, yeah, small ship based, but big box. Probably gonna charge you, like you said, forty bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing is gorgeous. Let me pull up the spread here. We kind of talked about it already a little bit in another video. But they released yeah. more cards. They also released the dial. The dial was leaked out. Then all of a sudden, FFG miraculously came out with an <laughs> article the same day. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, maybe we should uh, put up an article with yeah, all the right? stuff people just read. And I'm a little jealous of that dial. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's an amazing dial. I think, what what is it? There like uh, 10 green maneuvers? Yeah, there's, I think the whole is? dial is green. All I see was green. I didn't see anything else. <laughs> so I'm going to actually, before, yeah, before we get into the show, I'm just going to pull the ten, dial. 10 greens. Look at that dial. It's got a dial four straight. bullshit, man. Four straight. It's got <laughs> a 4K turn. It's got man. talent rolls. It's got it's got green for all two. It's got oh my, it's got everything. Yeah. That's this, that's this thing I um, awesome honestly, habit. the only if it had one banks, I would say it's the best dial ever. Mm. But I like I like one banks too much. But one hard, uh, yeah, you know what? But I do like how it kept it kind of, kind of, 
kind of like the TIE Fighter-ish dial-ish, yeah. where you have the one hard turns, but this thing wants to go fast. Yeah. Wants to go real fast. Yeah. And, I, you know, honestly, you know, whatever the Resistance Bomber comes out with, they're trying to make a thematrical. You definitely know that Kylo's badass in it in the, in the trailers that you've seen thus far for Last Jedi. Yeah. This thing wants to go fast. But it looks like it can turn on a dime with the three talent rolls and the four K turn. Um, that's the only red maneuvers that's on this dial. Everything well, else, and it's, got, and it's got all the hard turns too. Yeah, one, twos, and threes, and twos are green. Three and ones and threes are whites. So, I mean, that is an awesome dial. This thing, and then if you, I'm gonna pull up Kyle Ren's uh, card, which we've already, already been kind of spoiled from the last article. But it's got focus. It's got target lock. It's got barrel roll. It's got boost. If you act right now when it's apply only, we'll throw in something extra. <laughs> it's got everything. And three attack dice, three agility, four hull, two shields, you know, elite slot, system slot, tech upgrade, 35 points, coming in on a PS9, using the same Ky- uh, Kylo Ren's ability from his other uh, Upsilon class shuttle. The first time you are hit and attack each round, assign the I'll show you the dark side condition card to the attacker. This thing is nasty. It's a mean, mean ship. Oh, but at least know, it doesn't have bombs. <laughs> but it's going to eat my bombs. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. But, well, like like we said, <laughs> you yeah. could theoretically take him out with one bomb. Potentially, with a lot. Yeah, with a lot of some nasty. With a lot damages. of luck. <laughs> but I do like how they're bringing out that it's got four hull, two shields. It makes it a little bit beefier. You know, to, you know, to withstand some of those. You know, because a lot of the things right now you see on the meta right now is all secondary weapons. Harpoon missiles, yeah. concussion missiles, this missiles, these bombs, every you know, it's all secondary weapons. This thing can take a lick and then yeah. give it. Especially yeah. with And what I like about time. what I like about this stat line is that it's it's beefy enough to have survivability, but it's not so beefy as to be immune to damage. Like it's not you know, they didn't give it the ghost stat line of like ten hull or something like that. Like it's it's in my opinion, it's a fairly balanced stat line. Yep. Uh, for uh, especially given the maneuverability. And in coming in with you know Kylo Ren at PS9, looks like you have a test pilot at PS7, first order something yeah. at PS6, uh, and a Sinar Jakku something maybe at a PS4. I mean, these are this is you're gonna have one of these ships in your list as an ace, probably Kylo Ren. Yeah. Um, but PS9, I mean, this thing is nasty. I mean, it's got a lot. I, of you things. know what? I actually feel like that Blackout, the PS7, may be the better so pilot of this pack. So I'm going to bring that up right here. Which one? Right before I get into anything, the art for these cars. Let me for it. The ship for yeah. the the ship is amazing, but the <clears> art <throat> because of that red indiglo cockpit. It just, it just makes, looks angry. Yeah, it looks like, hey, I've got a beef yeah. with you, and I'm going to solve it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so you see Blackouts. You want to read off Blackouts' ability there? Yeah, Blackout is uh, PS7. Yep. Uh, when attacking, if the attack is obstructed, the defender rolls two fewer defense dice to a minimum of zero. That is nasty. And Blackout has an EPT, so you can give him trick shot. A trick shot makes the, 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 the attack obstructed. And coming at 31 points... I mean, you, yeah. you you put trick shot on there a couple points. I mean, you get a thirty five point ace. People yep. dream about that stuff. Because I mean, trick shot is zero point EPT gives yep. you one extra die when your attack is obstructed. Yep. So you're getting an additional die. So you're you're shooting four dice, uh, at least four dice, um, if your attack is obstructed mm-hmm. and your opponent is reducing their defense by two. So and a system and a tech slot on top of it. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, because you can give him uh, advanced sensors so that next turn he can barrel roll out of the way of the obstruction before he moves. So you put him in front of the obstruction. Ooh. You take your shot. You barrel roll before you move next turn. Oh, see, Jim, this is why I have you on here, Jim, because <laughs> <laughs> I, because you, you're on your second glass of wine. This is exactly <laughs> third, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> The, you know, actually, that's not a bad idea because if you think about it, yeah, he wants to go in, go out, move around. Oh, yeah. that's going to be nasty. I don't like that. Because with with trick shot and advanced sensors, he's still he's only a thirty four point ship. Which I mean, it's not it's not a cheap ship, but for what he can do and for his stat line, it's not bad. 
why do Imperials all get, always get the good shit? Why do they always get they always get the good stuff? I don't know. I'm actually this is probably the first Imperial ship that I'm actually excited about. Um, I, I enjoy flying uh, the Striker, yeah, but I'm not like it's not something I'm excited about. Right. Um, and like I have I have an Imperial list that I fly every so often that I like, but it's not something I'm excited about. Oh. Um, I'm actually excited about the Tie Silencer, so. That's so, a first for me. So excited me, about an Imperial release. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm actually kind of excited. I, I never, ever, except for triple defenders, ever fly per Imperials. And, <laughs> and that I doesn't even count. That doesn't even count, exactly. <laughs> that was before triple defenders were good. I was flying triple defenders before they even got those those upgrade cards that made them all so spectacular. You were, so you were flying shitty defenders. I was flying shitty defenders, exactly. <laughs> my first tournament, my first, first, first tournament ever was triple defenders. I think it was the, really? yeah, it was the the low of the totem pole triple defenders before they came out with the tie X seven and all those weird X you know, upgrades. It was first triple defenders. I think I went fifty uh, fifty in that in that round, but um, I was playing some of the guys who are now are the part of the Hornet Squadron podcast. I was playing Jacob uh, oh. Jacob McFalls, and yeah. um, uh, he had triple hounds, and I went right to triple hounds afterwards because I just love the mechanics on how slow and bulky they are, and they can just shoot half the you know halfway. But I was, but triple defenders were it. But this thing, this thing yeah. looks fun. This thing looks, I you know, I don't, I hate flying Imperials. I hate flying scum just because I'm just rebel through and through. But this thing makes me want to like, hey, I want to hijack this ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, my, my thing is I go through these phases where I'm really anti-large base. Yeah. Um, like I want to fly something that really maneuvers. Yeah. So like I well, sometimes I'll fly the Falcon if I want to do that. But like I, I really sometimes just really want to get back to a fighter that can move. Yeah. And yeah. this is this has that side of my brain excited that that it's got such a great dial and so many options in terms of positioning, yeah. like barrel roll, boost. Um, it's got the system so you can do advanced sensors, so you can do one of those things before you do anything else. Um, I just, I, I'm really, really excited about the possibilities of this one. You know what the, fu- and the funny thing is with, the, with this article, they kind of released all the cards. And in the other video that we talked about it, we talked about prime thrusters, auto thrusters, which you can see right off the bat. All right, but they show you the, the the title card, the first order Vanguard, which we'll get into in a second, and also advanced optics, which we just talked about with the resistance bomber. But one of the cars in the top left corner there, which is actually threat tracker, which yes. I was hoping, and and this is me hoping because to make the level the playing field with bombs, I was hoping threat tracker was a way to respond to bombs, like a small ship, mm. you know, ace, you know, tech upgrade. Where I can shoot, you know, if I if I go next to a bomb and get damaged, I could potentially dodge the bombs, like roll my attack yeah. dice and potentially roll defense. But threat tracker, not that, not what I thought it was going to be. No, far from it. <laughs> <laughs> three yes. f- three points. Uh, it says when an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one to two becomes the active ship during the combat phase, you may spend your target lock on that ship to perform a free boost. Or barrel roll action if that action is on your action bar. Yeah. So some maneuverability. I like that. It just makes this ship a lot more maneuverable. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, it actually could play well with another upgrade. I'm just double checking. Yeah. Um, debris gambit. And I'm gonna show. Let me show that card. So debris gambit. You got the card in front of you. Yep. You wanna read it off? Uh, it's an. It's an EPT. Uh, and it's an action EPT, and yep. the action is assign one evade token to your ship for each obstacle at range one to a maximum of two evade tokens. Damn. So I'm two thinking points. the uh, threat tracker, you spend your target lock when that ship becomes active during when the, the ship that's targeting you becomes active. Right. So you barrel roll yourself towards asteroids, getting evade tokens. Uh, oh. Okay. You barrel roll, you may spend the target lock because on Because unless, I mean, unless I'm interpreting it wrong, because... Oh, no, you know what? This is an action, so it wouldn't be... You wouldn't be able to do it that way. I was Oh, I was so the combat wrong. phase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. Never mind. Forget everything I just said. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> 
But you know yeah, what? Yeah, you can you can fix that in post, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's going up as is, Jim. <laughs> Son we, of a bitch. We don't do no post. <laughs> we know. <laughs> when enemy ship inside your firing art range, where it becomes active ship during the combat phase, you may spend a target lock on a ship to perform a free boost barrel roll. If that's action. Okay. Oh, I see. What it you could still help you arc dodge. I mean, it could it could still be a way to arc dodge. Yeah, because technically speaking, you can do two barrels because one in the activation phase and then technically one in the combat phase. It's not the same action, right? So let's say if I did a... I'm, hear me out on this. Let's say I did it, took a barrel okay. roll action in my combat phase to get out of an arc, but I didn't make it. Yeah. And I, I had a target lock for whatever reason, maybe push the limit or some, some something. Spend the target yeah. lock to do another barrel roll action, right? I can do another yeah. barrel action in the combat phase because... Right? Or is it once per turn to do barrel roll? Actually, that's a good question. I oh, I don't know. You know what? I always interpret it as you could only do the action once per turn. Because like even with um, oh, I see what you're uh, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. with with Ahsoka, Ahsoka can spend a focus token at the start of combat to have someone else do an action, right? Yeah. But if you had done a, a boost you can't already, do the action. you, can't do you the couldn't action. do another boost. Okay, strike that uh, one too. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, we're over two. Don't, don't edit that one out either. Then. Uh, so uh, what I'm thinking is that this this helps with arc dodging because um, the ship inside your firing arc at range one to two, or either arc dodging or improving your own shot. Like if that ship is activating before you, like if you've got an an ace that's activating, um, you can spend your target lock to potentially arc dodge yourself, barrel roll yourself or boost yourself uh, closer, maybe even out of their arc, but mm. also improve your positioning to maybe go from range two to range one. Okay. I see what you're saying. I also like that too, even with low PS ships, because this is small ship only. So this actually, yeah. this actually we even... I'm thinking out loud here. If range point become, uh, becomes active ship during the combat phase, you may spend a target lock. <coughs> you know, if I was Dash. running three blues, da oh, yeah. Does he have a tech upgrade? Because, no, I'm thinking anti-dash. Uh, because dash, the typical dash, doesn't have anything at range one. Can't shoot at range one. So... Uh... When he becomes active, you spend your target lock on him, you boost into range one, he's screwed, and you have a range one shot. Full broadside. Fire everything. Yep. Nice. Exactly. You know, actually, you know, because you know me and my T70s, because T70s got a tech slot for three points. Hey, I, I love, I have a T70 list that I love too. <laughs> I'm, you know, even if I don't run four of them, if I run three of them with Threat Tracker, yep. this opens the. This is like an anti-ace almost, if you really think about it. Because let's say the yeah. ace does ace things, right, after I move my twos, right, my blue squadrons. I can technically, in the combat phase, when they activate, because they're activating later, uh, I mean, the first, they're acting first, I, as soon as they activate, I can move my ship out of the way. Yeah. Oh, what wow. about um, if you're only going with three? Would you be able to upgrade to uh, Red Squadron veterans and equip them all with expertise and threat tracker? Oh, that know, way you can just use oh, your uh, oh, you your know. action to boost oh. your target lock. That way you've oh, always oh. got a target lock. Theoretically, always got an, a target lock I'm for threat pull, tracker. I'm pulling up here because uh, <laughs> uh, this is important we're, to we're me. We're gonna build a list now, are we? Yeah, we're gonna build a list right now. Rebel Alliance uh, T70s. Where are you? T70s, T70s, T70s. I think it's Red 20. Squadron veterans, the one that's got an EPT, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Red Squad, they come at 26 points, so just two more points. If I do the tech upgrade of uh, Threat Tracker, that makes it 29 points. I still got four then, points to work with. And expert, expertise is four points. Expertise? Is a four-point EPT. Then you're 100 points, right? Yep. Because then I just got to spend the focus token. I still get, I guess, still get my expertise... I'm wondering though. You don't need. You don't need, you don't need the focus token though. I mean, it to help you on defense. But this uh, with threat tracker, you spend a target lock. 
So you, right. you've got expertise, so you don't need a focus for offense. Right. So you just take a target lock every turn. So you can either use it for threat tracker or use it on offense. Uh, I mean, it makes it it makes it a little tough just because then you don't have an astromech to give yourself integrated astromech. Right. I was even thinking about like instead of expertise, but I can see what you're doing there. Oh no! Push the limit will make me three points. I was trying to see if I could fit vector thrusters in there to give me a barrel oh, action. Oh, um, what about what about um, snapshot? Because then you can fit vector thrusters and and. Uh, no, you still don't have room for an astromech then. Mm, no, no astromech. Oh, but I'm gonna be playing with this. All right, back to the back, back. back <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> back to the article. <laughs> Squirrel. Oh, uh, you know, the, uh, because that actually opens up the because it's small ship only. It opens up a whole bunch of shenanigans for low PS yeah. ships. Now, how many of these come with the silencer? Are we gonna have to buy like three silencers to get? Good question. Let me pull that up. Let me, uh... Two, two. two. So, <laughs> yeah, there there are two. There are pictures of two in the thread or in the in the spread. Yep. So I'm assuming it comes with two. But you know that opens up a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, I didn't think because my first thought of it like this card, I'm like, eh, eh. But you know what? The way you, t- I mean, the the way we more talk about it, I think I liked it because the lower PS. The key word is the combat phase. Range one to two becomes activated during your combat phase because that's what always yep. happens to me with my PSs, with my low PS ships, <coughs> is I get arc dodged. Yep. yep. Then I could put the arc dodge back in their face. And that also that would be interesting. Um, the the threat tracker would be interesting on something that has fire control system because then you're getting a target lock all the time, basically. You may spend your. T- <laughs> oh, I gotta pull up the list builder back up. <laughs> because wait, wait, wait. So let me pull up something that can take a target. Uh, where's uh, VCX system slot? Fire control systems. After you perform, oh, after you perform on a target for an attack. Oh, but yeah. Uh, okay, oh, you're saying I'm thinking like as soon as you lose the target lock, you get the target lock back. No, but this one's after you perform attack. But still, after you shoot, you get the target lock the next. The next turn, yeah. Then you can take your regular action. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, Jim, I love you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> wow, this is going to be very interesting. You know, this is what I love about this game. This game, you know, just gets more and more, you know, deeper and deeper and wider with all the different stuff. No pun intended. Maybe pun intended, but deeper and wider as with all the. The options now it's bringing yeah. up my ships that I like oh, the fly. You know what? You oh. can't you can't do the VCX thing though because it's small ship only. Threat tracker is small ship only. No, I was just pulling up to see. What, I wanted to see the text on um, on uh, on fire control systems. I was just pulling VCX. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, sorry. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, small ship. But 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 the fire control systems have only attacked. But I get the target lock no matter if I attack on that turn. Then I just get my free action normal turn beforehand. I could fit vector thrusters on there somehow, some way, or maybe even different ships. Oh, you got me thinking with this. Yeah. The funs and joys of list building. Yeah. All right. So. Do, hey, hold on a second. I, yeah. Now I got to check something out. Sorry. Go ahead. Or I got I to look something <laughs> so up. So your here. mind's going too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So while while Jim's looking up whatever he's looking up, we're gonna pull up the first order Vanguard. This was released in the first article that we saw. Uh, with the first spreads, tie silence only. Tie silence are only title only. When attacking, if the defender's only ship in your firing arc at range one to three, you may re-roll one attack die. When defending, you may discard this card to re-roll all of your defensive dice. This is two points. It's kind of like a built-in lone wolf ish, ish. Um, yeah. But uh, definitely for two points, I like it because. Um, only when defending, if you want to discard a card, like it's like your last option, you can discard this card to reroll as many defense dice. But for range one to three for your attack dice, I like that. It's like a lone wolf. Yeah, it's it's good. It's um, it, it's actually I think probably its best use is that second half of its ability uh, as like an end game ship. Right. So exactly. like if, if it's one ship versus one ship, you can just and you have a bad roll. Well, you've got. Uh, an automatic insurance. Yeah. re-roll of all of your defense dice. Yeah. Got definitely some insurance there, which is nice. I mean, it's single use, but still. I mean, I think we all know that sometimes 
<laughs> single use is all you need to get yourself out of I've been there, done and got trouble. a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I just need natties. Give me all natties. I need all of these. That's right. <laughs> all right. So then, then I think um, we talked about the blackout. We talked about yeah. Debris Gambit. I think that's pretty much everything that they kind of released in, the, uh, released in this article. The biggest thing was the dial that was leaked out. They kind of released this oh article because it's just insane. But I think coming up, they have on December 7th is when they're potentially releasing this with also in the U.S. area with also um, Wave 12 ships. So five yeah. ships. Uh, my wallet is going to be broken that day. Um <laughs> It's it's five ships being released. It's just insane that we have all this many ships. The meta is going to be flip flop upside down. And what I want to talk about, I think we want to talk about next is regional season. Next video um, is regionals. Like you know, what are you guys doing? I know you guys are going. You know, Blake and uh, Jim are going to some re local regionals. Um, yeah. But with all these five ships. The regionals are going to be flip flop upside down. You know, all the top players are already doing vassal, trying to trick, you know, trying these ships out, trying the different things, and trying to find the different builds. Um, it's going to be insane. Yes. Yeah. What do you? Um, I mean, any final quotes on or funny words on this whole Thailand Thai silencer? You think you're going to be buying a couple of them or one of them? Uh, one for sure, um, because I do want to try that blackout thing. Um, I, I don't know whether I'll buy more than one at this point. I'll have to see. Uh, have to see kind of what the what the point costs are for like the the generics um, mm -hmm. to see whether or not I can build a list that I'm comfortable with with more than one of them. Because um, like I said, I don't fly Imperials very much, so I'm. I'm really not comfortable flying Imperials. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy this one list that I've got, but it's one of those lists where I have to like stare at my dials for like 10 minutes each turn because I can't remember what they do. <laughs> um, so I, I'll, I'll certainly have one to, to try out, and then uh, depending on, on how comfortable I get with it, I'll, I, may, I may pick up a second one. All right, yeah, I'm definitely going to pick up at least one. I may eBay the uh, the other two uh, threat tracker cards, <laughs> or I might buy two. I don't know. Maybe so. I don't know. But I'm really interested. You know, the ship alone. I just like to have a ship in my arsenal. I just love the ship. It's just gorgeous oh, yeah. ship. But the threat it's tracker a beautiful card. Design. Yeah, the threat tracker. It's like a tie interceptor on steroids, which is nice. Yeah. The but the threat tracker card is making me really think about what I want to do and what I can do and just opening the door up for a lot of different things, especially for low PS ships um, and just some maneuverability, which has always been the problem with low PS ships is after you move yeah. and do all your shenanigans, then all the higher PS aces do their shenanigans and then you're screwed yeah. because they got out of your arc. Um, In fact, that was what I needed to look up. I uh, my my first thought was, "Hey, quad jumpers have a tech slot," but I forgot quad jumpers can't target lock. So, oh, that's right. What can you put targeting computer as a modification? <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> right? Well, no. You know what? No, because if you're flying quad jumpers, you want to have space tug tractor array. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can't win them all. Damn it. <laughs> This is the you know, so there are other other videos that we have about list building and this is the hard part about list building is finding all the mechanics what works what doesn't work trying to figure out um, uh, all the different lists and the nuances but the, the biggest thing is keep things simple don't worry about too much handshaking you know if you if you have a ship that can fly by itself that it can hold its own and you have three of you know two or three of them that's also nice too but that's the hard part about list building is trying to figure out what works. And don't base your, um, I mean, Jim can also talk about this too. Don't base your uh, your list on trying out on one night at a local game shop. You know, you yep. want to give your list a couple chances to see what what you know what works, what doesn't work, and try to make small modifications. But at the same time, you know, try to figure out you know when you're playing all the lists. Okay, well, if I see this type of list, I'm going to do it this way. If I see this list, yep. I'm going to play this way. Because that's what it's all about. It's all flying, you know, the best tactics, trying to figure out what your opponent yeah. does and what they can do. Jim, any, uh, you good? 
I'm good. All right. So let's wrap this up. If you guys like what we do, definitely hit that like button. Subscribe to our uh, channel. Also, if you guys want to help support us, check out Team SBG. Check out our token store. A whole bunch of cool new tokens. Uh, we also have the, um, I'll show you the dark side tokens uh, down below. You can check those out. Also, if you want to check out our apparel store, Teespring. We have a Teespring store with a bunch of cool ass designs. Take a look at that. That helps support us. Also, if you guys want to join up our Facebook groups, we have tons of community Facebook groups for different games, but one of the biggest is actually X-Wing, uh, and one of my favorite ones, don't tell anybody. Um, but we also have Jim, who also does the Listenator Challenge and hosts that, and you get your chance to win once a month a 20-piece token set by just submitting a list by following the rules of the previous yes. month's winner. Yes, we have every month we have a set of requirements that your list has to have, uh, and then, yeah, then the uh, community votes at the end of the month. They vote on uh, who has the best list. That's the best part about it. It's all community-driven. We don't actually vote. You guys pick the winner. Uh, and also, Jim, always a pleasure. Thank you for being on here. Um, Thanks for having me. If you guys don't know who Jim is, Jim is one of our artists that does a lot of the token designs. He also has his old alternate card cards that he works on. Also, check out his book. He is an author, Radko's War, kick-ass sci-fi book. I'll definitely include the link below. Um, if you're really into sci-fi and you really wanted to um, hear just some crazy stories, adventures, and this and that, definitely check it out. I'll include the link down below. Great book. Um, and, Jim, I appreciate your time always. My pleasure. Happy to be here. All right. We'll sign up. We're going to talk about regionals coming up because there's a whole world of regionals for 2017 and 2018, <laughs> right? 2018? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's both, both yeah, spanning over to two things. For regionals and then worlds coming up but we're going to talk about where jim and blake are going to be going and where you guys can see them and what are we, are we talking about what you're flying maybe we might we might okay because <laughs> <laughs> that's everybody wants to know okay jim's going to a regional but what is he flying <laughs> everyone probably just assumes i'm flying quad jumpers or something stupid <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah. all right stay tuned uh watch the next video coming up thanks bye